Welcome to another video on Shopify fundamentals and especially an introduction of cross-border selling. So this series of video is a social proof of my learning process, especially with Shopify, to take the certification exam. So this, right now, we are in the model two. Uh, so in the model one, we look at Shopify uh, 101, uh, the, Shopify, the about Shopify, uh, the merchants understand your audience as a Shopify partner, as well as the ecosystem and how you can grow as a Shopify partner, the Shopify platform itself, so the admin dashboard, the collaborator accounts, the Shopify core, the online store, the checkout, and some basic admin features. If you want to extend that, you can rely on any of the apps on the Shopify App Store. Uh, you have Publix and custom apps, uh, and also sales channels, so which are avenues that any business has to promote and sell their products and service. So here we have uh, the POS, the, the online store, the shop pay, or the Shopify, which is an application for Shopify, the shop pay, the shop app, as well as Google. So when you share data, or if you want to sync your online store data and products with their Google Merchant Center, okay, as well as social media channels, right? TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. So the whole point of this is to recognize that each one of those sales channels are a way to promote your good and service beyond the online store. And also, uh, I look at what is the shop app uh, and in the finance aspect, or the talking here in the... Uh, the finance department of Shopify. So you have Shop or Shop Pay, which is an e which is a customer checkout that easily save your billing address, your uh, shipping, <clears throat> sorry, as well as your address. So you can easily uh, have an streamlined experience when using your your checkout uh, so also uh, for example shopify uh, funds or shopify capital so if you want to receive funds or ask a loan to a shopify you can do that of course you must be you must meet a certain eligible criteria you can also as a customer do something called which is pay in advance uh, or which is the buy now, pay later. Uh, this pay in, uh, let's still recall this, the pay, pay in installments, okay? It's just a fancy way to say, you're, you're gonna split your, split the price tag in equal payments. Usually for, uh, so you can pay that in four months. So this is this is it, right? So pay in installment. Uh, so Shopify money was uh, so Shopify capital is another option on the Shopify money section. Uh, so you can ask loan uh, from Shopify. Shopify payments that they that your customer can go with, whether it's Visa, Amex. Uh, Mastercard, Google Pay, Apple Pay, uh, Shop Pay, as well as uh, managing money management tools uh, that Shopify offer to you. So you can look at your store inventory as well as transactions. The POS, uh, which is another component of the Shopify platform, this is 
very very interesting because as an e-commerce uh if you want to make a little bit of just to recap uh, the history of the e of the POS, which is very interesting. So it was invented at the end of the North American Civil War because shop owners need to find a way to uh, satisfy and assist customers, uh, but they need to hire strangers. And for these strangers, it was very, very easy to pocket money from customers. So everything changed when James Reedy from Dayton, Ohio invented the first mechanical cash register. So the Reedy's went out of business uh, and their patent were purchased by uh, John Henry Patterson, which later found what is known the National Cash Register, which now not only focus on cash register, but also in other technology adventures and in, in the technology fields. And that include POS, ATM. Uh, so for example, Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Corporation is actually using in Argentina uh, their, their products. So just to see the relation here. So going back here, the POS, so the POS allowed the customers, or in this case, the POS allowed merchants to easily sync inventory when selling, while option provide the customer with their preferred payment options. So whether it is local delivery, uh, or, or uh, Local local shop, uh, local delivery, ship to home, which is this involves is international uh, shipping, or email uh, details, uh, which is well, send a link to the to your customers, where it can continue the checkout process online. Okay, so this POS, all right. Uh, it made of two parts, the software and the hardware. So the hardware is a piece of the, so, so the hardware is something that Shopify provides you specifically for this activity uh, to keep to keep seeing your inventory, manage staff, uh, as well as uh, use it uh, in person for your customer. Or you can rely on the software. So by downloading the Shopify uh, POS app, you can now use it on your tablet, uh, mobile phone, or iPod, or iPhone. And the iPhone has a, a technology called Tap to Pay, which uses the MTC near field communication, which is a, a, a protocol to ex a protocol to exchange data in short range so and also i look at the shopify uh, support okay how they provide is general support based on the support help center uh, as well as the tutorials youtube tutorials videos and partner specific uh, how do you call it a partner specific uh, resource right so for example the the community or the forum as well as so the forum the so the forum the partner specific help center which is a database that contains data relevant to how to build launch and manage uh, your business as well as uh, some relevant data uh, for product partnerships or growth partnerships and some uh, other channels like Slack channel or Discord. So all of this, okay, uh, and also look at their support channels. So all of this was the section one, which is great, okay, and this gives you a broad sense of 
what is Shopify, the Shopify one on one. Okay. And now with the model two, the introduction to cross border selling, they talk about is if your merchants, okay, remember it is they they are your audience, okay. So your merchants, if they want to sell international, internationally, <coughs> sorry. So when your merchants decide to sell internationally, because they want to increase sales and other metrics they use to go with, especially to increase sales, diversify their revenue stream. So this international sales or uh, cross-border selling, what it does is commerce across borders. So commerce without borders. So this is something good for the merchant and as a Shopify partner because now you push to the international landscape, okay, to build brand awareness and trust that will increase sales and customer retention and customer conversions as long as you offer a unique buying experience that is tailored for this audience on those markets because buyers in any market uh, or the buyer expectation in any market are different. So by offering them this online store that they can uh, go with their local prices, the local language and pay with the preferred payment methods, that will increase trust and sell making your business sustainable and flexible when things go wrong. So for example, when policy change, currency, currency fluctuates, or you will have to face uh, fraud or risk by entering into, into this new market, which is one of the challenge, especially when, you, when you're entering uh, in those international markets. Managing complaints is one of the challenges. The other is if you don't offer a localized buying experience, well, your business will suffer. And also, especially for the shipping, negotiate affordable shipping price uh, or, or negotiate affordable international shipping rates without high volume is difficult and especially express shipping. So despite of all of this challenge, Shopify say, okay, if you are a merchant, okay, you are a merchant and you are a Shopify partner, okay, as a Shopify partner, you can tell your audience, the merchants, hey, this is the two approaches that you can choose according to the Shopify certification, excellent, according to the Shopify Academy, okay, so they say, you can go is with one single store approach, okay, a leverage using a leverage with Shopify market where you can customize and create multi currency, multi language store, that kind of thing for storefront. Or you can just go with the multi multi store approach where now you can is create as many stores as you need to offer a customized tailoring uh, or a customized buying experience. So despite the two approach, despite these two approach, Shopify market after all is a suite of cross-border selling tools that allow merchants to start sell internationally from one single admin, okay? So you can, as a merchant, can customize your domains, uh, the local currency, the language, the preferred payment methods. So your buyers can now, sorry. So your buyers can now uh, select your products and ship to their place, whatever they happen to be, or their home or any other place. So by creating this unique buying experience, okay, uh, the way you can do this, 
in using Shopify market is by creating markets. So you have your primary markets, it can be your domestic market or not, or any market that you receive your main source of income, okay? Uh, and then you have other markets where here you can now tailor a, the buying experience for those international buyers uh, to offer is with the local currency, uh, with in their own language, with their preferred payment methods, a market that you don't sell. So despite which market you create, okay, which segment you create to offer this unique buying experience, okay, there's some settings that you can configure here. So domain is one of them. So you can now improve your SEO by offering this a particular domain. And also, or you can also redirect users to their respect region uh, based on the user browser preference. The other is pricing in currency. So you can offer this uh, on their own currency and pricing. Shopify payment, which is a unique uh, unique for store that are created in certain countries okay it automatically well, sorry it automatically sorry so it automatically converts to the current exchange sorry it automatically convert to the current currency exchange markets another settings The uh, language in translation, uh, pretty self descriptive. Accepted preferred payment, okay? And also tax and duties. So, for example, by offering us a checkout, a trustworthy checkout here, where buyers now can see which. Uh, Buyers can see all of their different taxes uh, and fees they're gonna be they're going to be charged to receive that good or service. So this is another features that increase increase transparency as well as repeated business. So knowing this, okay, the settings that you can configure on each buying experience per market, okay, and the benefit that, that comes with is that, well, you you improve the customer experience, so international, so by using international SEO to attract more uh, visitors to your store and offering them a customized buying experience in the local currency and pricings, as well as offering them, offering to them different storefronts that you can customize and improve the checkout transparency by showing us all the tax and uh, fees. So as a merchant, this increase in trust. So this will this will boost this will boost your trust, increase sales, uh, and over time your customer retention and conversion. And the other is that for the merchants, since you don't have to worry about the complexity of cross-border selling, because all of that has been extracted to you, so Shopify deal with that, and also you are providing is, so Shopify provide you tools uh, that you can go with Shopify provide you tools that you can go with to manage risk and liabilities and also you can control all of your markets from one single place but this is the benefit of the Shopify markets okay uh, 
And then I look at the multiple store approach. So this multi, multi store approach is for business that has the, or, or that needs additional features and flexibility that match their unique international selling strategy. So Shopify, the Shopify Plus offer up to nine additional store that merchants can go with. So the benefit of using that is you can operate, okay? So you can operate uh, and manage different product catalog for specific region that's one of the beauty of this so if you are a, a huge merchant okay if you're a mature merchant when you have a well-established business with several employees and locations you are you're performing at the highest level of shopify you're pushing the boundaries you can you might consider to go with shopify plus one uh, and also uh, especially if you are doing this cross-border selling. So this is one of the benefits. So you can operate and manage different product catalog for each specific market. And also you can offer a hyper customized experience to your customers. However, However, because uh, okay. However, it comes. This comes with a challenge, specifically for the people you hire for that. Since if your inventory is shared between, if your inventory is shared between markets, uh, you have to keep that in sync. So you have to uh, keep track quantities here manually the other is manual updates in online store or in themes must be per store and also installing applications in your shopify app uh, you must do that per uh, store and you must that and you must pay that individually so this is the challenge that comes with this international selling strategy that Shopify mentioned, described, that you can go with, all right? Uh, so now here, comparing, which is this. So now here comparing, comparing the option, okay? Uh, which is Shopify market versus multiple store. What are the difference between Shopify markets and versus, uh, versus multiple stores? So Shopify provides flexible options to meet merchants' unique international selling needs. So merchants can use Shopify markets, multiple store, or both. Okay, so those options or difference are based on the target audience, the target audience, overview of global sales, selling in multiple language and currencies, market-specific domains, and staff management. So the, la the latter actually makes a lot of sense, okay? Staff management, market-specific domain, selling in multiple language and currency, overview of global sales, and target audience. So let's go, let's go over this. So target audience, all merchants can use either markets or multiple stores with the caveat that some features only work with Shopify payment. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So target audience. Some features here, so some features only work with Shopify payment. Meaning stores, stores, created you know meaning store created 
in one of these countries. And you may wonder why. You know, why? Why only works in those countries? Welcome. Welcome to the those in these countries. Welcome to the winner. Welcome to the Second World War winners man, who after the freedom after the Breton 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 Woods agreement Breton Woods after the Breton Woods agreement they define the new order in this case the new system financial system or monetary policy that the war will be right so the Breton Breton Goods agreement okay man well, that's the reason <laughs> and here we are right so Latin doesn't get in here uh, so that no and there is no no country here in Latin a couple countries sit it here in South Asia uh, Europe and Australia Europe, Australia, and that's all. And North America. So North America, Europe, Australia. That's all. That's all. So Middle East, the, the. So Middle East, Africa, Russia, China, who the hell are you? Interesting. Not even in China. <laughs> you know what? Not even in China. So that's the reason uh, why, uh, based on the country you set up your store, or based on the country, uh -huh. because this is only available in this type of countries, and the way to make sure that is by using the two-step authentication. So you can create here, uh, you can perhaps have some friends that help you to hand over a mobile phone for that, and, you know, that kind of thing. So in any case, so target audience, so the target audience, the other is overview of global sales, multiple store, multiple store only show performance for that store, while Shopify markets show an overview of every market in one place. This is it, okay. Some features only works here, that's right. Uh, it tells that market or Shopify markets, exactly. Multi-store, multi-store approach, only show performance. Mm -hmm. Uh, only show performance for that store. Well, in well, Shopify market. Well, Shopify. Ma well, markets. Well, markets. Show performance across. Across. Uh, show performance across uh, of every market. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Show performance across markets. Uh, what is this? No. Ba, 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 ba. Exactly. Uh, selling in multiple languages and currency, which is uh, with multiple store merchants need to manually adjust price. Translate an account of to each individual store, which is exactly so. Merchants needs or multi store, multi multi store approach, multi store approach, or a multi store approach. So, merchant needs to. Uh -huh. 
So in multi-store approach, merchants need to... Mm -hmm. In multi-store approach, merchants uh, needs to manually, exactly, manually update their store, or manually update themes. Yeah, merchants need to manually update their themes, uh, language, currency. Exactly. So merchants need to manually update the theme, content, pricing per store, while market allows to do that in one single admin panel, in one single place. Enable merchants to automatically set currency and use machine or human translation. So market-specific domains. Merchants can automatically redirect buyers to the right domains based on their geolocation using subfolders in Shopify markets. Multiple stores don't have access to subfolders, so they need to use third-party apps to redirect buyers to the right side. Meaning, again, you need to hire a specific person for this well-established business, this mature business. Okay, market-specific domain. <clears throat> Merchants can automatically redirect buyers to the right domain. Okay, so merchants can autom automatically, okay, so merchants can automatically on the exactly so merchants can automatically redirect customers to so merchants can man so merchants can automatically redirect customers to the right to yeah, to the right so merchants can automatically redirect customers to the right to the right language to the right domain okay to the right to the right domain based on their preference based on the browser preference or based on their geo location using subfolders because it's this so merchants can automatically redirect customers to the right domain based on their geolocation using folders. So merchants with this with market specific domain is about redirection. Okay. Uh, so merchants can automatically redirect customers to the right domain uh, to the right domain based on their geolocation. So using subfolders where uh, in Shopify market. In Shopify, in Shopify markets. But now but multi but multi 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 store approach but with multi but with multi but with multi store approach you need to rely on third party third party apps to do that And then the other is staff management. This is one of the benefits here. So multiple stores offer more granularity, granularity with staff management. So multi, exactly, multi-store approach 
offers more granularity gran granularity to for staff management so merchants have full control over who get access which different to which different admin with single store setup using markets all staff member will have access to the same admin exactly you have much more control who get access to this okay so multi-store approach offer more granularity for staff management meaning meaning you can control who get who get who get access to which store you can control who get access to which store Mm -hmm. You can control who get access to which store. Whereas with uh -huh, so whereas with ba -ba 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 -ba. so whereas with yeah so whereas with so whereas with markets. Yeah, so we have with markets, all staff members will have access to the same admin. Whereas with markets, mar market, all staff members will have access to the same admin. However, you can customize. However, you can customize based on so you, however you can customize their access or their permissions their permissions okay however you can customize their permissions okay okay so this is the the difference here uh, between again you're talking about the, the different product product difference okay so target audience overview of international sales so target audience overview of international sales uh, selling in multiple language and currency which uh, uh, yes yeah, selling in multiple language and currency because with multiple stores, you need to do that manually, okay? Uh, so update your themes, content, and pricing. Uh, well, mer well, markets allow you to do that well from one single place. Market-specific domains, so <clears throat> market-specific domain is that you can, okay, market-specific domain, meaning that you can redirect users to the right uh, or to the right domain which is here market specific domains okay you can redirect your users to the right domain based on their geolocations which with mark uh, whereas with multiple store approach you need to rely on third party apps Okay. Mm, okay. It's like man. It's like are you sure with that? Are you sure with that? Uh, okay. <clears throat> the other is a staff management. The other is a staff management. <clears throat> mm. 
The other is a staff management. So with market specific domain, it tells you that it's like merchants can automatically redirect customer to the right domain based on the geolocation using some folders. Okay, so market specific domain. You can redirect your users based on their geolocations to the right domain using Shopify markets. But you can also do that in multiple store. <clears throat> uh, however, it, they tell you that exactly. Uh, you don't have access to so folders, uh, meaning that you need to rely on third party applications. Okay, market specific domains. And the other is a staff management. Yes, you have much more granularity about who get access to which store in multiple store approach, uh, whereas with Shopify market, all members have access to the same admin. You can control, uh, you can control the permissions, however. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So this is the difference, okay? The product difference. So target audience, overview of global sales, uh, yeah, overview of global sales, uh, selling in multiple language and uh, selling in multiple language uh, in currencies. Okay, and this this is part of the well with multiple store. You need to manually edit things, content, and pricing for each store. Whereas with Shopify Market, you can do that only that from one single place, okay? So this is selling, selling the, <clears throat> selling, 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 Selling in every currency or selling in multiple, selling in multiple language and currency. Uh, okay, market specific domain. Because here you, with Shopify markets, you can is create so folders that redirect your users to the right domain. Whereas with Shopify, whereas with the multiple approach. You can do that. You must rely on third-party applications to achieve the same functionality. Interesting. And the other is a staff management. Pretty self-descriptive. You have much more granular control about who get access to which store. Uh, and uh, also you can, or unlike uh, Shopify markets, everybody has access to the same admin panel. However, you can is set permissions uh, to define which of those collaborator accounts have access to. So this is the, the product difference, okay? So uh, target audience, target audience that they can use Shopify payments, so target audience, Target audience, uh, multiple in uh, selling in multiple selling in multiple language and currency, market specific domains, as well market specific domain, uh, staff management, uh, an overview of the global online sales. Okay, there's five different. The, the five difference across this okay so broadly speaking the five difference all it's like broadly speaking is the five difference right so target audience okay this is the five difference here so uh, the target audience the overview of online sales Sorry, so the overview of global sales. Sorry, the overview of global sales because with Shopify markets you can see that from one single admin, unlike multi-store approach, where you need to 
uh, go with in each market and then do the math behind that to actually know that right so an overview of global sales multi or selling in multiple language and currency manually update your themes and content and prices for each store using the multiple store uh, but with Shopify market you can do that from one single place so next uh, next uh, next Next, uh, specific marketing, uh, reparaphrase, reparaphrase, I don't know, reparaphrase. It doesn't matter if you don't recall that, okay, reparaphrase it. Because this four topic, we're talking about market uh, segment, or, mar yeah, or market segment, or market specific domain. That's one of the things. So market-specific domains. Why? Because with Shopify markets, you can create several subdomains based on uh, folder structures that you recommend your visitors to go to the right store based on their geolocation. Okay? So this is... market-specific domain exactly so market-specific domains and the staff management so this is the five difference here okay five difference here uh, it was actually quite lovely uh, to now this different and be able to articulate that so for example when someone came here and tells you hey what is the difference between the Shopify markets and and the the shopping the multi-store approach right so first is your target audience. So you can use Shopify payment based on where your store is located, okay? And all the benefit that you can go with Shopify payment, right? So it automatically it automatically converts pricings based on the current currency market exchange, okay? So this is one. So target audience Overview of global sales because with Shopify markets, I am witness of that. Uh, with Shopify markets, you can see your international performance across markets. You have a section on that, whereas with multi multiple store, you have to do that manually. Selling in multiple language and currency because now here with multi store. Despite you have full granularity control with uh, about who can access to which store, which is another feature or another different staff management, here you need to manually update prices and content as well as your themes for each store. So you need to hire someone to do that. So you can delegate that. All right. <clears throat> market specific domains because shopify markets can offer a subdomain folders so users can it recommend uh, users to go with their prefer uh, so it recommends their users to visit their proper domain based on their geolocation and the other is a staff management five difference here okay so five difference here target audience overview of global sales multi uh, selling in multiple currency in uh, selling in multiple selling in multiple language and currencies 
market-specific domains, as well as staff management. Okay, so I tell the difference to a merchant. Okay, <clears throat> I mentioned the difference to a merchant. Uh, despite this, he say, "Hey, how can I choose this?" Okay, how can I choose? Okay, you you mentioned that, but I want you to simplify things, man. It's like Simplify, simplify. So what are the difference between Shopify market and multiple store? Uh, and what are the downsides to multiple store? Limited overview, overheat costs, technical complexity, and labor intent. This is one of the downside of multiple store. It is funny because you mentioned the downside. Hmm. He mentioned the downside. Okay. So downside. So where are the downside to multiple stores? So what are the downsides? So where are the downside of multiple stores? The downside. So, what are the multiple? What are the downside of multiple store? Uh, well, limited overview because you need to manually do that. Information is siloed across stores, so merchants can see a holistic view of how they're performing in each market. It's limited, limited overview. So merchants, merchants can have a global view mm -hmm. or, or merchants can have an holistic, an holistic, right? So merchants can have an holistic view of each market. Right, so merchants can have an holistic view of yeah, exactly. So merchants can have an holistic view of of how each markets each markets uh, of how each market or how each market are performing performing limited overview. The other is overheat costs. Overheat costs. Overheat costs because merchants must lean on a variety of third party which add uh, which add up quickly. Shopify subscription costs are also charged per store. Exactly. You have overheat costs based on the third party apps. So overheat costs. Uh, manually, so overheat costs. Mm -hmm. So manually costs merchants needs to or must lean, must lean, must lean. Interesting, must lean. Have to lean, must lean. Uh, must all right, <laughs> all right, all right. I love it. So merchants must lean. I love this. Must so merchants needs to or must lean. Okay, I love it. I love it. So merchant must lean. Okay, so merchants must lean on on a variety. Of third party apps. I love this word. So, must lean. All right. Okay. Must lean. Smooth criminal. So, over, overheat costs. So, merchants must lean on a variety of 
third party apps which add up which add up quickly exactly so merchants must link on a variety of third party apps and Shopify subscriptions per store you know so limited overview overheat costs so merchants must lean on on a variety of third party apps and Shopify subscription per store overhaul overheat costs technical complexity okay so technical complexity that's why you hire a Shopify partner to do this and labor intense. Labor intense. Okay. In most cases, merchants are best suited to selling from one single store with Shopify markets. However, some unique needs may still result in multiple store being the best option for some merchants. In the next section, we'll cover when to recommend exactly. We'll cover when to recommend multiple store versus Shopify markets. The question is that when to recommend multiple store versus like when to recommend multiple store versus Shopify Shopify market because despite all of this different okay so merchants want to know the outcome when 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 can I use it? some recommendation Shopify market isn't right for every merchant at all so both Shopify markets and operating both Shopify markets and operating multiple store are entirely valid solution for international expansion the strategy you recommend will will vary depending on very on a variety of factors. Okay. So Shopify market and operate multiple stores are both are both great strategies or, or are both Valid strategies. Strategies. It's all. Uh, it's all about. It's all about. Mm -hmm. It's all about. Yeah, it's both our valid strategy. It'll depend. It'll depend on. A variety of factors. So there are a few merchants characteristics that make multiple store. Exactly, there are a few merchants characteristics that make multiple store the ideal option. Often these merchants will have a team of dedicated staff for each region of markets, separate legal entity to keep information in in silos, advanced need for customizing their storefront for different market. Very, very, very important. So when to recommend multiple store? When to recommend when to recommend multiple store? Okay. So for merchants or mature business, okay, okay, for merchants, for merchants with few characteristic characteristics, for merchants with few characteristics, like. Exactly. For merchants with few characteristics like a team of dedicated staff, a team of dedicated staff members, 
per region or per market, per region or market, okay, a team of dedicated staff member per region or market, uh, separate, separate, separate legal entity, very, very important, separate legal entities, to keep information in silos, to keep info in silos, but a separate legal entity Okay, so a team of dedicated staff member per region or market, a separate legal entity, okay, so if I, if I, if I am a well-established business or a mature business, okay, uh, where now that I have all of these cover operations big enough uh, that I need to tame Okay, uh, so now that I am this massive corporation, okay, where now I need to sell in, uh, cross borders, uh, so yeah, it makes a lot of sense for merchants that have, so it makes a lot of sense for merchants with a team dedicated to a region or market or th th that those merchants uh, have separate separate legal entity per store okay they have separate legal entity or do you need advanced need for customization the store from for different markets or hyper customization per store Hyper customization or store, exactly store hyper customization per market. So some merchants may want a hybrid approach with a couple of additional stores to cover larger areas like continent. Mm -hmm. From there. Each store could use markets to localize under that umbrella to cater to market within the larger region. But again, this is for merchants that wants to go global. When to recommend Shopify markets? Ideal mer merchants for markets are those who currently sell cross-border from a single store or very small number of additional store, generate high international traffic to their store, Exactly. So generate high international traffic to their store and actively searching to expand uh, their business international. In Shopify, payment requires for market. If the merchants want the ability to sell in multiple currency and offer local payment methods, they are required to have Shopify mark payments. If you're working with a merchant who isn't using Shopify payment, they will be able to access some of the feature of market but they will have to but they will have the two prices and currency feature mentioned which would you recommend the fa uh, fastest growing Canadian skincare brand wants to localize their entire online experience <clears throat> into new market they're trying to include customized content per market different regions will have unique messaging and branded to resonate with the local audience. Market specific product catalog for thousands of SQA they sell. The ability to manage global fulfillment from warehouse in Canada, the US and Australia. The ability to manage global fulfillment from warehouse in Canada, the US and Australia. Exactly, you have market specific product catalog for a thousand SQA they sell. Customize content per market. Uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. It's like uh, everything this, that this merchant wants to do is the opposite of a single store. Without the added overhead to open up separate Shopify.
Oh, so base of this. Ah, okay. So Shopify market. It's possible in a single store with the other overheat. A mid-side candid food business from Portugal has around 75 employees. Exactly, 75 employees. They currently sell 10G uh, growth merchandise value a year. And have started attracting new buyers from other countries in North America and Europe. They want more direct target. They want to more directly target Europeans and North American buyers. They have those in the SQA. Uh, and they need to include duties and custom charge for customer at the checkout. They might to go with Shopify markets. Yeah, they might to go with Shopify market, which is suitable for this approach. The other is an Australian fashion retailer is working with multiple distributors to regionalize their operation into 10 countries. Regional staff management. They will need regional staff management. Distributors are separate entity with no overlapping in staffing. Seasonal and market specific discount and campaign. Seasonal and market specific discount and campaign. Full control over individual theme elements for each market to fully customize the look and feel. For this, you're more likely to have multiple stores. Why? Because you will have regional staff management. Uh, and you want seasonal and market specific discount and campaign. As well as control over individual thing element for each market. You want this hyper customization. Yeah, you want this hyper customization. here. So multiple store is the way to go. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay. So, when to recommend multiple store? Is for this. And, yeah, when to recommend multiple store? And when to recommend Shopify markets? And when to recommend... Shopify market. Okay, ideal merchants for markets are those who ideal market or ideal merchants for those ideal mer ideal merchants for markets, okay, ideal merchants for markets are those who wants to increase, so wants to increase internationalists, uh, want, uh, generate high international traffic, you know, generate high international traffic. To their store currently sell cross-border from a single store or a very small number of additional store currently exactly currently sell sell uh, sell cross border okay currently sell cross-border from a single store for example here so currently currently sell exactly so currently self currently sell cross border from a single store currently sell cross border from a single store or a very small number of additional store or or a very small or a very small number of additional store uh, and actively searching to expand their business internationally. Actively searching to expand 
mm -hmm. actively searching to expand their business internationally. Okay. So according to them, right? So according to them, It's an early release. Eligible merchants will see a link to apply for this under admin. Fill in the merchants of record. More merchants of record. <laughs> you should be by payment means that prohibited or restricting items required for this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shopify markets here. Okay, okay. Must lean. So, uh, so that'll be all for this video. Take care. Bye bye.